Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host, Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 26th of October, 2015. This is episode 152, Turtles and Butterflies. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. This week was normal, normal week, except I worked several evenings, um, longer shifts. Instead of my normal five hours, I was working six hours one night. I worked eight hours. <sighs> I worked seven hours one night. I don't know. Longer shifts make me more tired. Who would have thought? One night, um, people from night crew called in, so they needed me to stay extra, extra late. So there was a little bit of overtime. So yeah, very, very tired making. And I got called in early two days in a row. So super fun. My store is a pilot for some new program. So we've had visitors um, twice this week, which means everything has to be super perfect instead of just normal. So I had to stay late for that. And then I guess that's happening again this week because I'm scheduled late again this week. And going in early and staying late cuts into my knitting time. So this will probably be a shortish episode. The other thing that happened this week is that my kids went to a birthday party. It's the first time that my kids have gone to a non-family birthday party. They've been invited to a couple others, but it just didn't work schedule-wise. But it's really, really fun, and it was fabulous. It was all rainbow-themed. The mom got all the ideas off of Pinterest, and it makes me wish that I was less lazy with my kids' parties, but I'm not can't put that much effort into it because lazy. Anyway, knitting stuff. The Finisher Frog craft along is still going on. You have one month and five days still to finish anything. Um, if it's a new project, you get one, um, one entry. If you frog something, that's one entry. And if it is a work in progress from before September 1st, you get two entries. Everything is, is explained in the thread for um, both the chatter and the finished objects thread have all the information, so go check it out there. And yeah, I think that's all I got about that. Uh, I have some finished objects. They're all very small, but they are finished. The first is this distaff. So I usually wear it over here to do. So this is a distaff. I will be releasing the pattern. It should be up by the time this video is out into the world, but maybe not. Um, definitely by Wednesday it will be released. So the fiber goes through here, and this basically just holds the fiber from getting caught in the spindle as you're spinning. Or I'm sure you could use it with a wheel too if you were using small strips and needed to keep them from doing whatever, I don't know. Mostly for spindling. That's what I use it for. And um, yeah, so it's a pattern, free. It'll be on Ravelry. You should be seeing it now-ish. The yarn is from Haley from a long time ago. I don't know what it is, but I had a big scrap of it. So that's what I picked. Um. It's fingering weight yarn. I worked it on US 2, 2.75 millimeter needles, um, which is a size up from what I normally knit socks on. Very easy pattern, um, I think, and my test knitters seem to be okay with it so far. So I'm just waiting for feedback on one more before I take pictures and finalize all the things. So yeah, very quick, very useful. My other two projects are the same thing. They are Seamless Salomas by Megan Williams, um, based on a pattern by Susan Busby. And I have two pair, red pair, blue pair, for my nephews. They're both acrylic. I don't know what this one is. This one is Red Heart Super Saver in cherry red. I worked them on US size 5, which is 3.75 millimeter needles. Yeah, that's correct. Um, which is smaller than the pattern calls for, but they have smaller feet than the smallest size, so that's what I went with. Um, 
yeah, very quick, very easy, and I don't have anything else to say about them. I've made seamless slomas before. I really like the pattern. I will probably be making more in the nearest future for myself because I have a pair of slippers, but sometimes they get yucky and they need to go in the washing machine, and it would be nice to have a backup pair. I have had seamless slomas for myself before, but, you know, I wore through them because that's what happens with slippers. Very hard on my footwear, which is why I usually don't wear footwear unless I have to. Like, when I'm at home, usually no footwear, unless it's really, really cold. I have works in progress, but only two of them, and one of them I can't really show you. How exciting for you! So this is the first one. It's my design cowl, and it is almost finished. Um, it will be a finished object today. I'm on the bind off, but I just didn't have a chance to finish the bind off. If I was recording Tuesday, I would have finished. But I decided it was time to get back on my normal recording schedule because I like Mondays. Mondays are good. I just had extenuating circumstances pretty much for the past month. Anyway, the yarn that I'm using is a riot of color. So this beautiful variegated section is the Rumble Base, which is 7525 um, Merino Nylon. Yeah, that. Uh, merino nylon base and then the aqua color is oh this is called octopus's garden the variegated the aqua is the rumpus base which is 100% superwash merino in the waterworks colorway I'm working it on us size 3 3.25 millimeter needles um this pattern should be out uh, december ish early december um, I think it's a pretty quick knit, but, you know, I'm not going to be like, hey, Tess Knitters, Tess knits this in a week. Because I didn't knit it in a week. I knit it in probably two. But, you know, they have a month to test knit, blah, blah, blah. All the exciting, not very exciting things that go on behind the scenes of the design. Um, I'm really excited for this design, and I hope that my Tess Knitters like it. I have to double check a couple of the numbers I think I got off somewhere. So I'm going to double check that and then get that sent out and yeah, hopefully have this up in December. Really, really, really like this pattern. I really, really hope you guys like this pattern also. Uh, I had a pop-up and it was very distracting trying to record. Did I say that I worked it on US 3 needles? I think so. That sounds familiar. Oh, I'm excited to finish that also. I've been working very, very diligently on this. It's a big piece. It takes two skeins of sock yarn, a full skein of one, and most of a skein of another. So, um, yeah, it's going to be big. But it's like a cowl poncho sort of deal that can be worn several different ways. And, and uh, I was talking to Josh, and we were Skyping. Because we had, you know, like 20 minutes this week where we both didn't have stuff to do. It was crazy. And the wind just shut my door. And he was like, I really, really like that. That looks like something I would design. Which, coming from Josh, that's kind of a big compliment. Because, you know, his he's picky about what he likes. Um, I don't think he'll knit this ever. But he likes it, so that's cool. Other work in progress. I am still working on the unpronounceable mitts. The name should be going across the screen right now, and the designer name might be pronounced Tina Koo, but I don't know. That's also across the screen. They are lovely. So let me put this on. Do to do. This is where I am. They are fingerless, so I will repeat this. Um, this, what is this? Garter stitch band around the top. And um, this is where I was last week, where this little zombie guy was. I had almost a full repeat last week. I've done a few more repeats. 
I was doing so good at the beginning of the week. I was doing a repeat a day and then I just got off track. As happens as the weekend approaches. And you know, birthday party with a bajillion small children. I have no idea what my daughter just wanted. Um, oh, I'm going to guess she wanted some stickers. They're little labels and she uses them to fix paper. So she cuts paper and she's like, oh no, it's broken. I need a sticker. And she puts it back together because I have hidden all of the tape and the glue. So now, excuse me, now she uses the stickers. Anyway, here we go. Um, this pattern is very well written. It's it's not step by step exactly. You have to pay a little bit of attention, but it's really, really clear what you're supposed to do when. And um, it's got noops, which are these little things right here. You increase seven stitches into a stitch on one round, and on the next round, you decrease those all back to one stitch. So it's a really, really pretty detail. The yarn that I'm using is Sun Valley Fibers in the Woodside Gold colorway, and it is the um, 8020 Merino Nylon base. I am going to have a lot of this yarn left over, but I already have plans to use the leftovers to make socks for one of my nephews. Um, these mitts are for my sister-in-law, and this will make socks for her son, who is, um, he'll turn one in February, so he's got really small feet. So I'll still have plenty of this left over even after I make socks for him, but I thought matching mitts and socks would be cute for them. Because, you know, sometimes that's adorable to match your child. Um, what else? I don't know. I just really, really like these mitts. These will probably be something that I will make again in the future. Not immediately. I don't need, um, I don't need mitts immediately. But, you know, sometime in the future for myself or another gift because they're really, really nice. Really pretty. I could see a lot of people who I know enjoying mitts with this design. And I'm working them on US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needles. The pattern calls for 1.5, which is a needle I don't have. I don't have any 1.5s. I probably should, and maybe someday I'll get a 1.5, but I just used ones instead. Um, it should work out fine. They are a little snug on my hands. Not uncomfortably snug, but definitely like, which is fine, but um, I also have really big hands. Like, I have guy-sized hands. Women's gloves never fit me, so um, they should be fine for her because I'm pretty sure her hands are tiny comparatively. I'm pretty sure that she has to have child-sized, like her, her wedding ring was like a child-sized ring. Like, they had to buy something that was child sized. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that ring sizes work the way that shoe sizes work where like it goes up to 13 or something and then it resets for like kid size 13 and then it resets. I'm not positive but I, I believe I vaguely recall having that discussion like three years ago. Vaguely. So they should fit her fine which is good. What else about that? I don't know. I don't know, but random. I really, really like these little purple stitch markers, purple and blue stitch markers against the green yarn. Isn't it awesome when your stitch markers work so well with your project? They're like little pieces of jewelry for your project, and when you have the right ones, it just makes the project even more exciting. I'm really, really liking this pattern. Oh, and also the, um, the chart is really easily memorized. It's only eight rounds, free pattern on Ravelry. Um, it's only eight rounds and I had to look at it for the first two pattern repeats and then for the rest I've just been like, okay, and now this. And the only reason I looked at it for the second one was because I just wanted to double check that I was doing it correctly. I'm really enjoying this pattern. Definitely put it on your to knit list if you need mitts that look fancy but are actually super easy because it's only 
a um, a 10 stitch chart and the rest of it is stockinette except you know there's a thumb gusset and thumb and some girder for the cuffs super works up super super fast you know if you work on it which is always my problem I did some spinning this week I actually started just barely started plying the painted tiger I wound off what I had had on that um I had had it on this knitting needle. When my spindle broke, I slipped the cop off onto this. Well, I wound it into a center pole ball, but I'm working from the outside and I am chain plying it. So there's my loop for the chain. And I didn't make a plying ball where you do all the chain plying at once. I'm just doing that as I go. So this is very, very little progress on that, but you know, some progress. Um, spindle that Daisy from Daisy Knits, Jennifer, gave to me as a gift. Um, I tried it out at the ZK and inadvertently took it home and she was like, no, it's a gift. And I was like, oh, okay, well, good, because I felt really bad for accidentally taking your thing. That was a water bottle under my foot. Um, I also worked on the Jaws from... I don't remember who dyed this. I'm sorry. But this is the Jaws colorway. I finished the little small ball of fiber that I was working on and started another. So making progress on that. Um, not going to be finished by the end of the month again. Because, <sighs> you know, if you don't spin on things, they don't get finished. But I made progress. So that's good. And I also did some spinning on the wheel, but very little. Like maybe... 20 minutes this week. So not really worth showing. Yes, babe. The dress got broke off. Oh no, go fix it. You need a sticker to fix it? Okay, go take it. Take the sticker. Here's free stickers. Okay, enjoy your stickers. Um, what else? Uh, I think I did a round on my sweater. Yay! need to get back to that. Also not going to be finished by the end of the month. But hey, the mitts will be. And the cowl. So I will only have two things on the blanket at the end of the month that I wanted finished. But I will work diligently on those two projects. I'm not starting anything else until November. Which is not very far away. But I'm not starting anything else until then. Except um, Halloween is on Saturday. And my kids want to be things that... Um, I could go out and buy costumes for it, or I could make them. Gabriel wants to be a Ninja Turtle. Well, I work in a grocery store, and someone's child was a Ninja Turtle last year or the year before or something, and they had this turtle shell backpack that I'm borrowing for Halloween for Gabriel, so that's awesome. I don't have to worry about a turtle shell. I'm going to make him one of those hats. Um, I've seen it on Ravelry. I haven't looked it up yet this year, but I've seen it on Ravelry where it's a hat and it's got like the Ninja Turtle mask part that goes over the eyes, but you can flip it up so it's not covering the eyes if you need it to. Um, hopefully I can find that pattern again, and if I can't, well, then I'll just be making one of those up, and I'll be crocheting that because it's a child hat. I don't knit children's hats. Crochet is way faster, and it will be out of acrylic, so you'll probably see that next week. Um, pictures for sure, right? And then I don't know what we're doing for the rest of his costume. Probably just finding his most green pair of khaki pants and I think he has a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle t-shirt. And we're gonna go with that because I don't like buying costumes that are going to be worn, you know, once. Costumes are expensive-ish. Especially when I can make him something. And then he can wear that hat. That can be his winter hat. as a Ninja Turtle hat. That's what I'm thinking. And Mara wants to be a butterfly. My sunglasses are falling off my head. Why am I wearing sunglasses? I don't know. But I haven't taken them off yet. We had to run to the grocery store this morning. And I have really, really sensitive eyes. They are constantly dry. And I get headaches from the sun. Even with sunglasses. Even when I'm wearing sunglasses and a hat... Um, and sticking to shady areas. If I'm outside all day, I end up with a headache. If it's sunny out, if it's overcast, 
then it's a really small headache. But anyway, that's why sunglasses. Mara wants to be a butterfly. And I am, she, um, she used food coloring with me to dye the casing of an old pillow. And we're going to make the wings out of that. And then she has some like fluorescent clothing that she's just going to wear as the body of the butterfly. And I'll probably crochet her little antenna headband thing. Something quick and easy that will take, you know, 20 minutes and I won't care if she loses it or destroys it. All of that where I'm like, oh, I'm not buying my kids costumes, but I'm really kind of thinking there is this really, really cute headband at work because we sell, you know, all the things and it's got a little pink and black fascinator hat. It's pink base with black lace over it. And I really kind of want it. I don't need it, but I kind of want it. And then I could just wear all black like normal and that would be fine. But I could do like hot pink makeup because I have some hot pink makeup thinking about it. That might be my costume. So I might spend $6 ridiculous on this little headband hat thing. I haven't done it because I can't commit to it yet, but if it's still there in like two days, then it will be fate and it's meant for me. I'm hoping it sells by then so that I'm not tempted. I have a question for you. This is kind of a work in progress. Question. Okay, so I haven't started the foot part of the Frankenstein socks, so I don't have anything new to show you. But anyone who has staked before, I mean, I staked that uh, whatever mystery knit along thing. I can't remember what it's officially called. Glaciation, maybe? Josh Rick's pattern, you stake your shawl. I've done that, but then you tie off the ends. Well, for the Frankenstein, you steak and then you don't tie off the ends, you just sew things together. And we're using non-super wash wool for this, so it is a little, it's grippy, so it shouldn't break. But do I need to stabilize the edge of the steak? Like, do I need to worry about that? Or can I just cut and then seam it together? Anybody have ideas? opinions. I think I'm going to ask Instagram too, because that's a lot more instant gratification for answering. But please let me know if you've staked anything, if you have any experience with it. Um, yeah, I was going to do it yesterday at knitting because Lorraine, she does all the things and I was going to ask her opinion. But, um, she sent a text saying, Hey, it's my 35th wedding anniversary. I won't be there today. She forgot. Well, I'm sure she didn't forget that day, but the week before she had not mentioned, like she was planning on being there this week. So anyway, so I didn't steak and I want to steak because I really want these socks finished for Halloween. I want to wear these. So, so all black with a little pink fascinator and fr Frankenstein socks, of course, whatever, whatever. I'm not that worried about being fashionable, obviously, since I look like this with my, my flannel that is my go-to cool-ish weather wear. I really, really want to finish these, but I don't want to, I don't want to make the foot portion before I put together the heel portion, like the ace bandage heel portion, because, um, the foot portion is the length between the ace bandage heel and the toe. And I want it to be, I don't want it to be too long and I don't want it to be too short. So I don't want to just go and start. I don't know. I'm also trying to decide what technique I want to use to do the feet because, um, the pattern is written so that you can do it the parlor trick knitting sort of way where you knit one sock inside the other, like one tube inside the other, which, um, if you want to see it in action, Vicki of Heartland Knits is knitting socks, mittens. I don't remember. I think it's socks um, using that method. And she talks a lot about it. So I really kind of want to try that because, you know, she's doing it and the pattern calls for it. And it's something that I haven't done before. So that would be really cool. 
but it might take me longer than just knitting. Well, it would definitely take me longer than just knitting two separate tubes very quickly. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I think it depends on if I cast on, you know, today or tomorrow, or if I don't cast on until Wednesday. I think that will be the ter determining factor. But anyway, yes, if you know about sticking, let me know what you think. Because I'll have to look up how to stabilize the edges if that's what I need to do. Um, I don't believe that the pattern says that you have to. I will double check, but I don't recall that from my couple of read throughs that I've done. Let's see what else. What else? Oh, I remember. Okay, Barn Raising Square number 46. This is the Nerd Girl Yarns Back from Earth colorway. And I knit Josh's Christmas socks using this. And I also did parts of Haley's Christmas socks using this. And it's super bright and super crazy and it's going to look so good in my blanket, which is mostly green and purple because, you know, I did a lot of green and purple things. This will change it up a little bit. And I only knit one hex puff this week because normally before work, I sit in my vehicle for a half hour. the blanket is still broken. Go fix the blanket. I go sit in my vehicle for a half hour-ish, 20 minutes, some days. Um, I get there early so I can sit and knit. I know I've just said this whole sitting thing like five times, sorry. It's my transition time between home and work. Like anything that happened during the day, I just let it go and turn into a robot so I can do my job without whatever. I'm very, very pleasant at work all the time, even when... I'm feeling awful. Always really pleasant, even when I have a migraine. You know, customers don't need to deal with crabbiness. It's not their fault. So that 20 minutes is where I reset and I do some knitting. Well, I got called in early a couple days, so I didn't get that extra time for knitting. So that cut into my knitting time. And then I worked late, so that cut into my knitting time because then I slept late. <sighs> So only one hex puff. And it is also the Nerd Girl Yarns Back from Earth colorway. And it's super bright and it's not even a celebratory one. But I'm going to, I wanted to have one that was stockinette and then one that was, um, I'm going to do garter stitch. I'm just going to flip it inside out. I'm kind of debating whether or not I think Anne put the, um, the pattern that was on Josh's socks onto a hex puff. I need to relook at the stitch counts and stuff. So I might do one of those. I'm not sure. It's very pretty though, but I'm also thinking of making a couple mini skeins out of it because it's very, very pretty. I might use it all up though. I don't know. I don't know yet. I, um, oh, that brings me up to 394 hex puffs. I got something new. I just got it in the mail. When we got back from the grocery store, Laura said, can we check the mail? And I said, yes, we can check the mail. Because I had the keys on me anyway. She likes to ask me that frequently when I don't have keys on me. Because our mailboxes are at the end of the street. So we need the keys to access our mailbox. And if we're just playing outside, I don't bring my keys. But since I had just been driving, I had my keys. And we went to the mail and I have this lovely top. There we go. More colors there. It is from Hambly and it was the Fiber Club from September 2012. VFL Superwash Tops made in Northeast of England, which is exciting. And I won this beautiful braid of fiber. It's way more beautiful in person. Um, beautiful braid of fiber from Heidi, who does Undead Yarns. I took part in the um, knit, spin, dye craft along that she had. So it was knitting with um, indie dyed yarn or spinning or dyeing yarn or fiber. And I entered several things because I do all of those things and I won. 
So I won that fiver. Thank you, Heidi. I know you watched and I'm super excited. Whenever Heidi mentions anything, it's very exciting. She mentioned me on her podcast and I was like, mm, yep, that's me. Um, yeah, that is my new thing. And what I've been reading this week, I finally finished Dracula. I was working late last night. So I, did anyone else just get the monster mash go through their heads? Because I said I was working late and it goes, I was working late in my lab one night when my eyes beheld a eerie sight, I think. Yeah. So anyway, now I have monster mash going through my head, but it's been a really long time since I've heard it. So I don't remember all the lyrics. Anyway, last night was one of the nights that I was scheduled late. And when I am not on register or dealing with customers, I like to listen to the audiobook or music on my phone. And I said, no, I need to finish Dracula first before I listen to music. So that's what I did. I finished it. Um, it was as you might expect. If you don't know the story of Dracula, Google it. I'm sure Wikipedia will give you a summary. Um, I definitely could not have read that book as a book. I don't love books written in journal and letter entry form. I know that there's a term for that, but I can't remember what that's called. I don't hate it. And when I was in middle school, I actually really, really preferred books written that way. But now, um, uh, I don't love it so much. But it's finished. I really felt like Dracula was one of those books that I had to read because I love vampires so, so much. But it's, you know, classic, which means it's a little more dry than modern writings. It's just stylistically different. I still haven't read any Dorian Gray. I'm not even sure where in my house Dorian Gray is right now. Possibly in my bedroom, possibly downstairs. Hard to tell. I will have to look. And if I can't find Dorian Gray in one of those places, I'll just get it from the library. And then I will probably read it because I'm so much better about reading books from the library than books from my personal library. I am still reading The Grey Wolf Throne. I'm on page 217. I only know because I had to check because I didn't have a bookmark. So I had to keep a, uh, a note in my brain. And there are 520-ish pages. I really, really, really enjoy this book. If you like epic fantasy and you like world building and you like young adult, I would definitely check out the Seven Realms series. It's very, very good. I think there are... I know there are five books out. There might be more than that. But it's definitely worth looking into reading it if you like those types of things. Very, very well written. Very interesting. Um, not completely predictable, which is nice. I'm not saying it's like things happen and you're like, what? But it's, it's not totally predictable what's going to happen. Anyway, I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string, and I will see you next week. Bye.